Well, we certainly have some work to do, uh, but before that, I just wanted to take a second and welcome everybody, whether you're new to the channel or have been following for a while now. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Um, I've got a lot of stuff planned and I could certainly use all the help I could get. Uh, but if you've been following, then you know that I began this project just over a year ago now. Um, I started the conversion as an office. But since moving to the new house, uh, I no longer need it as an office space. So it, uh, well, it's been used as storage for two months. But uh, now that the weather's cooled off and we're somewhat settled down, it's time to get it back out and begin the process of turning it into a proper camper conversion. Since we do have so many new people to the channel, I thought this would be a great opportunity to sort of hit rewind. Uh, go back and quickly take a look at this project from start to finish, just so you can get a better idea of the process. Uh, and then I wanna come back and talk about future plans. Um, talk about what it currently lacks and what I need for it to be a proper camper conversion. As we look back, I wanna single out some of the major items. I wanna talk about approximate costs, the time it took for each one, and give you a very basic gauge of difficulty. Keep in mind that all of this will be in relation to the square footage of my trailer, which including the Vinos is around 120 square feet. The first major process was insulation, and although it was somewhat time consuming, it was one of the easier parts of the build. Jacob did the large majority of the electrical work, but it was surprisingly straightforward. And I think that anyone with experience in this field would tell you that running electrical for a cargo trailer is fairly simple. After the electrical was finished and we reinstalled the wall panels, we were able to put in the subflooring. This process was nothing more than laying down foam board insulation in between quarter inch strips and covering it with plywood. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of installing the actual flooring, but it was equally simple, just exponentially more expensive. Because the plywood needed several coats of paint and needed time to dry in between each one, we ended up dedicating an entire week just to painting. The pellet wood wall between the main cabin and the V-nose certainly is not mandatory, but because it was so easy and inexpensive, I highly recommend it. At this point, we felt like the essentials of the trailer were finally in place, and we could move on to the more fun stuff. I actually paid Jacob's dad to build these cabinets, and from what I understand, they only took him about a day. Once I had the cabinets in place, there was nothing left but to put a light finish on this butcher block and glue it in place. The last major item was the air conditioning. Now, after thinking about it more and reading comments from the last video, I'm just going to say it. Don't do this. Don't buy one of these roof air conditioning units. They're expensive, they're inefficient, and they're loud. Let me just give you a little demonstration. Okay, so a normal conversation sits at around 60 decibels on average. So let's see how loud this is in comparison to your average conversation. And I know that probably doesn't seem like a big deal, but just trust me. Do, do you know any close talkers? You know what I'm talking about? The kind of person that gets way too close when they talk to you and after a while, you really just want to smack them. That's how I am. Sometimes I just want to smack that air conditioner. Just 
so loud. What was I even talking? Oh yeah, let's compare it to this mini split. Okay, so this unit is rated at the exact same cooling capacity as the unit that's currently on the cargo trailer. But listen, it's on, you just can't hear it. And you might be saying, well, that's because there's an outside unit and that's the loud part. But look at this. Okay, I turned the temperature inside down to 65. So this is it basically running full throttle. Obviously, I'm sitting right next to it, uh, and I would be shocked if you could hear it. Crazy. So the mini split, obviously much quieter, but it's also much more effective. Um, in terms of cost, energy consumption, and effectiveness, it's just more efficient in general. It also serves as a full heater when it's cold. Uh, it has a built-in thermostat and comes with a remote control with all of your modes, temperature controls, all of that. So you might be thinking, that's great and all, but I'm sure it's equally more expensive. Not at all. Uh, especially if you waste even more money, as I did, to add a heat pump to the roof unit. The mini split is, in fact, cheaper even on the front end. The obvious problem being that it's not made to be mounted on a travel trailer. It's made to be stationary. But if there is a way to mount a mini split on a travel trailer without it just getting utterly destroyed, I will find it and I will do it. So if you've seen it done before or you know of a way to do it, let me know in the comments below because there just has to be a better solution than the roof unit. Okay, so now what? Um, well, now I mainly need three things. A window, a generator, and a bed. Uh, so if you have any opinions or ideas on those three things, let me know. Uh, but the first project will be the bed. And as with most people's builds, I'm sure, I want whatever my sleeping solution is to be some kind of space saver. It's a space saving sleeping solution. But anyways, you get what I'm saying. Some kind of fold up interlocking couch bed thing. Uh, so let me know on that. But other than that, I hope this video was informative to anyone who's considering doing a build or currently working on one. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I have zero regrets doing this conversion. Um, I learned a ton. To me, it was worth all of the time and the money, except for the air conditioning, but worth all the time and the money. Um, and I'm excited to keep on working on it. Like I said, the next project will be building whatever the bed system is. Uh, but until then, I'll see you next time.